So you you and Fred. All right. All right. So uh, welcome to the third session of the virtual IoT and Edge Days 2021. Uh, I have with me Nicola Lagloria. Uh, Nicola is going to speak today about the Eclipse Hara, an embedded client uh, for Hawkbit. So just a little introduction about uh, Nicola. He's the co-founder and CEO of Kinetics. Uh, Kinetics, as, as, as you all know, um, is an embedded software service company based in Santa Clara, California. Uh, Nicola, he works primarily as a solution architect, embracing embedded softwares and backend platforms interoperativity. Uh, he's also uh, the co-founder of Rapix.io. It's uh, it's a community uh, um, which uh, you know driven by the first Android smart wa smartwatches. He's also uh, a PhD holder uh, in astronautics and satellite sciences, where he worked on autonomous uh, navigation projects and altitude determination of microsatellites using Kalman estimators. Uh, he's also passionate about machine learning and stochastic systems. That's only a small part of uh, you know Nicolas uh, bio. So I'll uh, I'll leave the floor to Nicola to speak to us today about Eclipse Hara. So Nicola. Thank you. Thank you really much for the introduction. Actually, it was like a really full of details. <laughs> 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 so <clears throat> uh, glad to be here. Uh, thanks for having me. Um, Today, we will be speaking about Eclipse Hara that's um, incubated uh, at the moment. This is still in incubation in the Eclipse uh, Foundation um, umbrella. Uh, you can actually, um, uh, let me share my screen. So let me share this. So here, this is the page. Um, we are still in incubation. Actually, uh, I have really to apologize to the community. Uh, we have been really um, behind on the, um, uh, on the uh, due diligence process for having the source code migrated from our uh, repositories, public repositories, to the Eclipse one. Um, still, everything uh, is uh, available as a source code. For, you know what I will be talking to uh, about uh, on the um, Kinetics um, GitHub. So, in particular, the two projects um, that we will be talking about is the um, the DDI client and the Android client. So, those are. Uh, open today, not yet into the uh, Eclipse Foundation uh, Git repositories. But again, we are going through the um, the due diligence for dependencies, of course, and licenses um, uh, involved into the development, and we will be ready hopefully in a few months. Again, everything is still uh, open source at the moment. Um, so let me. So uh, who are we? Um, we are members of the Eclipse Foundation, and in particular, we are member of the IoT Working Group and the Native Working Group. Um, personally, I'm also involved into the H Native Steering Committee as uh, an interesting uh, and a very exciting um, opportunity for being involved in one of the most challenging, actually, nowadays uh, technologies. This, the, you know, the edge, the edge continuum. And um, Eclipse Foundation is doing a great job, actually, uh, trying to uh, evangelize the uh, what edge computing is to to the community. Um, how we got here, um, talking about uh, Hawkbit and um, and Hara. Uh, so we are uh, embedded OS providers, uh, especially in the Android space, um, and we have been using over-the-air technologies uh, for a while for deploying remotely um, new revision of our operating system uh, systems um, in customer locations. And um, so we start designing a sort of Android uh, Hawkbit client back in the days uh, for our internal use. Uh, by the way, um, I'm taking for granted a little bit about uh, what Ockbit is. I hope you guys have an idea. Ockbit is um, another project uh, under the Eclipse IoT umbrella in the Eclipse Foundation that uh, is specialized on uh, over-the-air updates. So it's a server-side technology that allows you to distribute uh, updates, uh, artifacts over, um, over the air uh, to your uh, on-the-field embedded devices. So the, uh, we have been 
using internally Ockbit for a while, and we developed some sort of client to just deploy our artifacts um, uh, into customer devices. And so we decided it was probably the time to, um, um, you know, try to make that something more established, even to give back to the community, of course, what you know, all of us are using for making the job we do. Um, and so we decided to uh, try to make it more real, something that other people may use. And so we feel the gap that was intentionally uh, left by the Awkward project that doesn't cover the, the clients, the, the embedded uh, device on the field. And, um, and so we wanted, we wanted to provide a sort of reference to, uh, for, for developing clients, uh, Hawkwick clients, uh, even for different operating system. So right now, primarily we focus on Android. Um, and one of the reason is that uh, really, if you are working with low volume devices, you need to deploy your packages, APKs or um, OS updates that are resides outside the spectrum of, of, of Google or the Google Play Store. So uh, distributing um, very specialized software to very specialized devices featuring Android OSs, because Android is very common on embe general embedded devices. Uh, it's a sort of thing that it's very important and crucial in different, in different um, industries. So again, I, I would not spend time talking about Hawkbit, um, the, but primarily Hawkbit um, has two handles that are uh, very crucial to the uh, to the update process. First of all, you have the uh, what is called the management API. Upon the management API, even the Hawkbit uh, front end interface has been built. Um, so, um, for instance, um, it looks like this. So everything is a web application. So you have a, um, a real uh, real um, workspace where you can really apply updates, basically drag and dropping distribution over over uh, devices. So um, we what we did is to uh, use the uh, direct, uh, direct device integration APIs, DDI, and write a client that was uh, able to talk to the Aquid server to um, gather, download, deploy, uh, software updates, OSs, or application into um, a remote device. So in a, really, in, in few words, this is what this is about. Um, so uh, this is, uh, we can circle all of these um, nodes of, uh, as a deployment model, um, really describing what is, what is happening in the real world. Uh, let's say that we have a build pipeline, building pipeline, and um, we baked, so we have some images or, or, uh, or programs, compiled programs that we want to uh, um, deploy on a remote device. So we can use the management API of Hawkbit to upload our artifacts. Um, uh, of course, uh, the management API are connected to the update server that is the real backend behind Hawkbit. And then the DDI API um, can be used for developing an API consumer that is physically is installed into the uh, into the, the embedded device, and of course, an embedded application uh, is the um, the last uh, I mean um, artifact that will be using the DDI API to handle. Let's say you have a kiosk mode system and you want everything to be handled inside your little UI, um, everything can reside actually in the embedded application that can take care of about all the life cycle like we will see in these slides. So this is actually like a picture of everything that can happen starting from your building pipeline, ending to the embedded device. See, these are the client, what we call the client use cases. So what actually a client should do um, from a DDI perspective, so talking to a Hawkbit server, which should do, uh, the, the client should do this, so the, the, the remote device should ask for pending actions, uh, um, uh, should download artifacts, of course, uh, provide a feedback about, I 
did I install correctly? I did not, something went bad. Uh, sending target attributes, it's really important. Um, it's a very important use case because attributes can trigger some sort of distribution, more intelligent distribution. Let's say that you want to distribute um, just that particular version of the OS to some targets that has some attributes. Let's say they have a particular name or a particular OS version, previous OS version, or a particular architecture. Um, of course, you can cancel uh, the updates. So there are a lot of things to take care of um, along the way. So at the end of the day, we can say that the target is driving the update logic. There are a lot of different things that we learn on the field um, so that a client, solid client, should take care of um, during the uh, update process. Like um, what if the board is um, not in control anymore, there is an outage, there is, so the, the, the download is partial or something happened during the flashing, the installation process. Um, I have to angle different uh, update modes or update uh, technique. Uh, let's say that I want to do a single image update or an AAB updates. Uh, we will talk a little bit more about those. Um, and then uh, what, what happens if I have to update the client, the Ockbit client uh, itself on the, on, the, um, on, the, on the machine? What, is a artif what, what if an ar update artifact is malformed? So it doesn't have the MD5 or something happened during the, the same MD5 as the source. Something happened dur during the, the download process. And uh, uh, an up, in, especially on Android system, but not only in Android system, uh, every update has to be uh, signed with the correct keys. So the client may reject um, an artifact that has not been signed with the, with the correct key. Um, so one of the things that is really important for, for the, Hawkbit, the entire Hawkbit and, and Hara um, concept is uh, actions and states. So device, uh, every device has a representation in the Ockbit server as a series of states. And those states can change. For instance, a simple drag and drop operation like I, I showed you before on the UI, I'm dragging the uh, distribution of, um, on the target. So a, a UI driven uh, action, right, has, has been triggered. And so the states, uh, for instance, of the device can go from idle uh, to actually pending because it's doing is, is starting the operation, the entire uh, update operation, or you can go uh, from a state. So you want to go to state one, state two, but there is some feedback, some trigger that may change the state back. So the there are uh, states uh, as a representation of the device on the server. In particular, on the Ockbit server, the device can be represented by four, uh, five states unknown. That means the device is not registered yet, is completely unknown to the system. Registered in sync when the, uh, the distribution that uh, has been um, uh, sent to the device has been installed correctly. Pending when we are still in the process, let's say downloading uh, or installation is still in process. So there is some sort of task in progress. And of course, there is also an error state. This is how they look like. I would not go into the details, but it's just for telling you how those states are connected by different events and uh, uh, everything has to be orchestrated from the back, from a backend perspective. Um, and it, it, that's a real great model. This is uh, something that make this, um, uh, this server really solid and uh, give also the space to, for clients to be solid as well. For instance, we, we, we have target states. So like, so these are the target represent the target states on the server, but on the target itself, um, we, we could have defined um, some states as well, like uh, can be in idle mode and download mode or applying an update and many things can go on the, on one side or the other. Of course, the more simple is from a idle state to a download state, you can go because you start an update process. But these three states, just these three states, actually represents the possible target states. Uh, what is important is actions. So an action uh, can also change the state of the device in a certain moment. Like an action can be start an update, another action can be a cancel update, and a running update, and the third action is start another update. These can be simplistic, but it is enough for handling the entire life cycle. 
Of course, as I said before, you can have um, um, uh, you can have um, um, uh, some actions that uh, may trigger a, a state change. In particular, um, there are an execution status, so the device can uh, inform the server of a particular uh, execution status um, of an action. Let's, let's say an action is, for instance, um, start an update. And for, a, for instance, the update may be rejected. So the, uh, the uh, target has to inform the server about the, um, the execution, uh, the start of an execution, and eventually change the state back to the previous one. So these are the components of HARA. Um, it's, um, again, it's a sort of very condensed uh, uh, diagram, but it's really what it is. So here we have the Hockbit server, and here we have the DDI API. The, we implemented uh, what is called the DDI client, and we, make, we made this um, with an eye on multi on a multi-platform perspective, uh, the DDI client, even if all of this was done in on an Android uh, system, so really not with a JVM that is the Java JVM that we may use in um, regular uh, Linux or uh, Windows environments. Um, the, the DDI client was strictly uh, wrote in pure Java. So these DDI client may be reused in other platform like, um, like Linux. There are things that we can say about how we could implement uh, this workflow on a Linux system without using uh, the, uh, of course, the, uh, the, the the JVM or the, the DDI client implementation that we provided. But still, the mechanism that we found, uh, I guess, is common to other operating systems. Um, and so many of these concepts may be really generalized to, to, different, to different operating systems as well. So we have the, DD cli the DDI client, and the, this, this DDI client also is communicating with a service. A service is a real service, like a, in this case, an Android service. It may be a demo on, on Linux. The service is using the DDI client API because the DDI client exposed some API. But more importantly, there are uh, um, some interfaces uh, defining in the DDI client that are populated by the service because they are platform specific. So I said that this is platform not specific, it's a, just a client to communicate with the Opbit server. Here we have what is more platform specific. In particular, we have a service that is running on the background. We have a service consumer that is just a bunch of API that you can embed in your application. So the way is the, your application to communicate with the service. Um, and the service is connected to a sort of multi-platform component that is the DDI client that takes care of all the Hockbit uh, DDI API. So um, the DDI client, again, it does really important, few really important things. It connects to the server. Um, um, it provides the device states to the server. Uh, Feedbacks again. So let's say the actions, actions, feedbacks, and uh, uh, of course, you also update artifacts. Right on the uh, uh, downloads the artifacts from the cloud to be installed into the into the target device. Uh, we made that platform independent uh, because it's GBM based. Um, but again, there are handles for implementing the uh, what we call the native the native service. And of course, there are also uh, it provides callbacks to forward notification to the API consumer uh, that is the service in this case. So again, we are talking about this communication. Uh, the API are really simple. Uh, we can um, start to pull the server. Uh, we can stop polling the server. We can force ping that say that there is a polling time, but we can also say, hey, poll the server now. Otherwise, Hawkbeat has a sort of uh, polling time that you can, you can configure server side. And then uh, most importantly, you can register a provider and we will see what a provider is. In particular, uh, one very important provider is the uh, config data provider. Uh, this is an interface that is populated by the native service to handle attributes that we need to send 
on the server. And this is very interesting because attributes, again, uh, can be used for, um, let's say I'm doing creating a, a filter on Hawkbit and those devices that has a certain type of attributes can be triggered for receiving an update in the moment they pull the server. We call that auto assignment. So a new device has all the software installed, it, pull the server, these uh, devices also sending some attributes um, like a previous version of the software installed uh, or any other attributes. Really, attributes are really flexible. And you can do a target filter and trigger a particular action to that specific device just because uh, it's attributes. Another important, very important thing that you have to um, actually implement in the target system, and this is specific uh, of the target system, is what the way you update the software in particular um, for instance we have two basic way of updating a software right single copy that means that we have um, a sort of recovery OS these recover so the system reboots in recovery OS do the flashing reboot again and then um, go to the to reboot with the new version or we may have a double copy that is really common on and you know android devices nowadays you run a mirror of so you have the entire system partition is duplicated and you have just one that runs a time and in the meantime you can rewrite uh, on a live system the other set of partition and when the update is ready you can the system can say hey and um, i have a new um, downloaded and apply a new update for for, for you um, do you want to reboot your system to uh, have the new system up and running and so what you do is to reboot the device and the device will boot with a new uh, set uh, the new oper the new operating system i mean a set of new partition in the EMMC memory that will host all the all the uh, new os of course this is a really uh, a safe way of dating a device because if something goes wrong in the image in the new image you can always roll back to the to the previous one so devices that implement double copy single copy it really depends on the uh, on the design of of the device itself on the memory available in the emmc uh, capacity so it's very important in the in the uh, that the, the service will implement the updater interface in the way that is target to the constraints the, the, the system may have um, physically. Um, so the service is what um, is the native part of, of the, uh, of the, of the um, ARA client on Android. So this is an Android service. Um, so again, it is specific for the operating system. Uh, where the the, develop, the deployment actually takes place. Um, implements interfaces provided by the DDI core API. Um, and of course, it uses all the inter-process uh, communication that is, um, uh, uh, that is is part of the Android, uh, the Android operating system to notify eventually whatever status to a consumer. And again, a consumer may be your app. So you have the service running in the background, you have an app, and this app is implementing the service consumer API. And so you can hide completely the service, work with the uh, consumer API and manage the entire uh, workflow of the update entirely from your, from your UI, from your one single point that is your application. Again, a kiosk mode is a good example to figure this in a single, you know, um, uh, user-driven place that is just one application. Um, again, this is our, about the service consumer. Um, and uh, what you can do, this is really important, you can include all the functionalities in a third-party app. Sorry. Um, so you don't, what is really um, important is the service consumer is a way for a third-party uh, app to just include all the functionality for handling, for handling an update. Um, so the, again, the, the ability of extending the service inside your own, your own application. These are a little bit of use cases, uh, of the, uh, service consumer. For instance, from your app, you want to make configure your service. 
um, your app, for instance, may want to show a notification that an update is ready to, to be downloaded. And you can actually say no or yes, so you can reject or accept the, the download. And uh, of course, the, it's very common on your phones, if you notice, and then when you have the uh, update downloaded, you can say, okay, um, I'm ready to install it. And you have another, um, you have another um, notification popping up on your system. Um, of course, the, uh, the user is like, can really do what the, the service consumer is doing on his side. So I can configure eventually the, 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 um, the device from a UI. Uh, let's say I want to change the awkward server um, URL, for instance, or the target token or the, the, the gateway token. Uh, I can do that from my app. Um, and of course, I have all the authorization, um, all the authorization um, acceptance that uh, pops up on the on the system. So again, the the consumer API are just just object class that you can um, uh, include in your in your third app, uh, third part application, and they take care about uh, the service info, of course. Um, that is, I want to know if the service up, is up and running, for instance. Um, the communication, so a set of classes that takes care about the uh, the communication between the service consumer and the service, so, and, and vice versa, so on both ways. Um, the um, Of course, there is a configuration of the service, so the service has some configuration parameters, like any other daemon, and you want to actually edit those inside your app or provide a different configuration from inside your app. And then you have all the messages that represent the state of the device. So let's say that the service is doing his job of synchronizing the uh, with the DDI API and the Opit server is synchronizing and taking care of the uh, all the states and transactions between different states, downloading an artifact, and you want to know exactly which state actually the uh, the the, ser uh, the service is, and you can ask through the service consumer API to the service, hey, what's your state? So you can have your uh, your user following um, the update process. So um, Eclipsar again was uh, our uh, formal way to uh, start a project that we have been using for for almost five years. And um, and give to that project also uh, some sort of um, reference for other implementations. Um, if you want to do a Qt implement, a Qt implementation of uh, of an um, of an Aquic client, you can pretty much follow this procedure. And um, where may the interprocess communication may change, you will be using instead of the IPC of Android Dbus. But still, uh, the the component that you see here are almost they are almost the same. Yeah, you may want to include the DDI client inside your service. This is something that um, a popular um, Linux um, update uh, uh, technology does. It is SW update. Uh, so SW update actually include the service and the client, the DDI client in the same uh, in the sort of same um, entity, but. Again, our purpose was just to make this a platform independent and reusable even in outside the Android the Android world. This is actually usable in your uh, Linux OS if you need Java, of course, but it works off the shelf into a Linux. It's a Linux OS. Um, again, we are really close to, um, we are actually, we hire um, um, the people that Help, helped us uh, to write those um, specifications and those uh, completed due diligence. And hopefully we would be done in a in, in few months and the, finally the code would be, um, uh, would be um, uh, pushed on the uh, Eclipse Foundation repositories. Uh, so the, uh, here are some links. Um, Again, uh, what is we have the uh, Git, Git, Git repositories already um, available for for this. We have a couple of people that are contributing outside our company that are contributing, and we're really happy about that. Someone is using actually Ara for uh, for his own um, applications, and uh, of course we'll be expecting you know more people to just take advantage of this because again uh, taking care of a uh, of a workflow of an update is not really an easy an easy thing, and so we hope that our path and what we did can help other people uh, like Hotbit help us to build 
this this product. Amazing. Uh, I think that was in the I was in the right timing. So it's just you know I think that was I, I'm a little bit too long or. Oh, no, per per perfect timing, like okay. always, Nicola. <laughs> so, uh, I mean, yeah. So great. Thank you so much for uh, for the great uh, uh, you know session uh, to talk about you know talking about Eclipse Hara. Uh, so, if anyone have any questions, it will be great just to uh, you know uh, click on the ask question button and just add the question there. Um, so, and, and in the meantime, I think it's uh, it's probably worth mentioning that. Uh, the goal of Eclipse Hara was to really to provide a, a reference agent software implementation uh, for Eclipse Hockpit, uh, as, as as you explained, and, and 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 that Eclipse Hara really works as filling agent uh, for the gap that intentionally left out by the Hockbit project, uh, and also provides a solid open source reference implementation uh, for Hockbit client that projects can be beneficial toward. The adoption of that project uh, as as a backyard uh, backend solution for um, over the air. Yes. So, uh, uh, moving to uh, to the question. So the first question uh, uh, I have is from uh, Monsieur Frederic Debien, uh, my colleague. Uh, so Frederic has uh, has a question and, and a follow up question as well. So he's asking: Suppose that uh, in an organization that uses continuous integration and uh, continuous delivery. Uh, from a complexity perspective, how is it really complex to integrate pipelines with Hockbit and Hara? I think it's really uh, a matter of few API calls. In indeed, if you, um, let me go back to this. So we made, um, a little tool that is a plugin for Gradle on Android Studio. So let's say that you are uh, coding your uh, your application and um, you want to generate the APK, you compile the APK, and then upload the APK to uh, Eclipse Hotbit and Eclipse and take care about all the two or three tasks that you have to do to make a distribution available. So doing these using the what is called the management API, right? So what, this part of the click software is absolutely, you know, in simple, simple to uh, take your artifact and upload as a as a as a um, an artifact into Hotbit, and also from the upload artifacts produce the module and software distribution you need at the end to to um, to be sent to the device. So this is a killer use case for the uh, management API. So really simple. Right, so uh, sounds great. So no really uh, major complexities in place. Um, no way. Um, so so is, is it possible to verify the integrity of the update packages when using uh, Hara and Hogbit? So yes, absolutely. Uh, this is part of the, of the client. So the client, should um, take care of, uh, let me go here. So the in this case, um, it, it really depends on the, uh, on, the, uh, on, the, uh, on the platform, but just for verifying the, uh, the, uh, the integrity, you have two ways. The first one is of course, to check the MD5 of the file that you are uh, grabbing from the cloud. But there is another level of security, for instance, in Android to allow you to the, the, the to finish the installation process on the device. And is is this package signed with the correct key that the system expects? So you have two ways. One is like just check the integrity of the uh, package itself and say, hey, this is the same file I've uploaded. It's not really corrupted while downloading. But the second is also about security. So is this package supposed to be installed? in this device mm -hmm. or not that so both of this are taken care are taken care by the client so it's hara now that takes control and allows or not the package to be installed makes great sense uh thank you and um moving to another question from uh, kai hodala from bosch uh kai is asking if uh uh did you implement another platform specific update uh service in addition to the one uh, for Android? 
so the quick answer is no. Hi, Kai. Um, so we are um, right now trying to approach the QT uh, porting because we have a customers that has asked for it. Uh, and so uh, that may be the next one. Uh, I know that actually Bosch uh, did uh, some uh, good demos with microcontrollers. So the thing is, you can also use the DDI API for updating microcontroller um, binary packages. So I guess that the, and again, in our design guidelines, we would like to cover also microcontrollers. But again, Android for us has been the primary use case just because the problem I was saying before, if you don't have Google certification, you need to distribute your uh, APK anyways, and uh, and uh, the Okbit Hara together can fulfill the job, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Uh, another question from Arne. Uh, is Hara um, intended and suited for unattended updates as well? What is the definition of unattended in this context? Uh, so, so so unattended updates uh it might be and and correct me arnie if if i'm wrong uh you can you can you can just reply but it might it might be an update which is not reflected in the uh additional specifications of the software so if an unattended means like a wrong update yeah uh but i don't think that is the question i don't know i'm i'm intrigued uh, by it, um, uh, oh, without using interaction. Without using oh, interaction. Oh, 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 absolutely. Oh, absolutely. So I was actually uh, talking about the, um, what we call the um, auto assignment. So one particular use case that is really crucial for some customer is um, I just power on a device just for the first time. There is the software installed, but I power on the device. And one of the first things the device to do is to pull the server and see if there is any update available for him, for it. And so without any user interaction, I created, of course, um, uh, Arnie, on the, on the server side, I created um, uh, what is called like um, um, a sort of rollout uh, already um, uh, ready for uh, taking action if a device pulls with the right attributes, and then if the attributes actually match the filter that that rollout is um, is um, is embedding, then the device will be served right away. So absolutely, uh, for first time updates, when you just you know um, unbox one device and eventually there's an update available, absolutely, Cockpit and Hara are making the job. All right, amazing. Uh, and more questions uh, before we wrap up this great session, by Nicola. All right, uh, Nicola, uh, thank you so much for uh, your attention today for the great session. Uh, it's been amazing. So uh, well, one more time, if, uh, if you need to reach out to uh, Nicola, please uh, feel free to the uh, to reach out directly on the uh, details shared on the last slide. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, the recordings will be available right after uh, we finish this day. So. Uh, 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 please stay tuned for that. And also, uh, uh, an exciting you know, fourth session is coming up for today. So uh, my uh, friend Frederick would be uh, would be uh, hosting uh, the uh, fourth session along with an amazing guest from HiveMQ. So stay tuned. Until then, I'll break a little bit before time just to give you a room for some refreshments and stretching. And uh, we'll see you in the next session. Thank you, Nicola. Thank you, everyone. Bye, guys.